Hey, what's going on Guardians? My name is The Black Link, and today we have the release of Destiny 2 Update 2.5.2. This brought with it some quality of life changes, a few sandbox changes, and of course, the Solstice of Heroes went live today. But in this video, we're going to be going through the patch notes that dropped alongside the update. There's really not too many things to cover here, and quite a bit of it is going to be you know, a rehash of some of the stuff we covered in the TWAB from last week, so we should get through this before too long. Let's go ahead and dive on in. First up, we've got the sandbox changes, and it's of course the biggest one most people were waiting for. Lord of Wolves getting nerfed. They've reduced the amount of ammo that shotgun scavenger perks can give to Lord of Wolves when it's in its release the wolves state. That's where you hold the uh, reload button and you can fire that extended longer range burst. But they've also decreased the effective range on Lord of Wolves and this decrease is going to be more aggressive when the weapon is in that release the wolves state. So basically a triple series of nerfs here for the Lord of Wolves. You're going to be getting less ammo back, particularly in PvP when you have sh or shotgun scavenger perks on. You're not going to be getting a ridiculous amount of ammo back from a kill. And the gun is going to have less range overall. I guess this was kind of their compromise for still allowing people to utilize the release the wolves perk whenever they wanted to, while not leaving the gun in the busted state it was before. I would have been fine if they had just reverted the gun to the way it was before, where like you had to get a kill to activate release the wolves. I think if they had done that, it would have solved a lot more of the or Lord of Wolves problems, but we'll see how this works out. Next up, they've made a change to perks. They fixed an issue that allowed the Feeding Frenzy perk to be applied to any weapon. That's a glitch I hadn't noticed and I'm kind of sad that, uh, that I didn't notice it. And I'm going to be even sadder knowing that it's gone now. Hmm. Moving on, we've got some armor changes. First up, they fixed an issue where the cloth component of the Iron Simaki, I think that's how you say that, cloak wasn't rendering correctly. They fixed an issue where the cloth component of the Terra Concord mark wasn't rendering correctly. Then next, they fixed a bug where the Titan exotic leg armor Peregrine Greaves glowed 130 times too bright when wearers were at maximum velocity. While our intention was for this exotic to help Titans destroy opponents with 130 times efficiency, we did not intend for its glow to burn out the corneas of the user. This is a really hilarious glitch that I did notice while playing a little bit of PvP. <laughs> yeah, if you had Peregrines on, they basically turned into the sun when you reached max sprint. It was actually kind of hilariously great, so I'm, I'm, I'm sorry to see that the shine, your shine as Titans is getting nerfed down a little bit. Alright, moving on, we've got some investment changes. This is some of the stuff we covered before as well. First up, the cheese for the Tribute Hall is being addressed. The Tribute Hall Triumphs, the Emperor's Gladiator, and the Scoundrel in Uniform now no longer require you to equip a full set of Leviathan gear to progress. Players will now earn more points based on the number of gear pieces worn, similar to other Triumphs. And then for Tributes, players will no longer be able to place the Tribute Hall Introductory Tribute on an alternate character to gain credit for a large number of Tributes placed. Players who access the Catalyst or Emote rewards through this method will have those items relocked until they place enough Tributes to meet the actual unlock requirements. Very quickly, we went over this last week. Basically, if you were on the second step of that quest where you have to go and complete one bounty for the Visage of Callus in the Tribute Hall, when he gives you that initial Tribute that you used to open the door, if you swapped characters and then dropped it on a second character, you could jump back to your main character and the Visage of Callus would just give you another, another Tribute. Then you could just keep swapping characters and doing that and every single time you did that and opened the door, it actually counted as a tribute towards those milestones for like the bad juju catalyst and stuff like that. You could actually use it to unlock the bad juju super early. So you could go through that quest, get the exotic, and then have the catalyst. And they're not going to be taking away the, the exotic itself if you, uh, if you cheesed the tribute hall like this. They're only going to be restricting access to the exotic emote you get at the end of the tribute hall, you know, whole event thing, and the bad juju itself. So you're going to have to get that... That 45, I think it is, tributes placed for the bad juju catalyst, and the 50 in order to get the emote. So there you go. Cheaters never prosper, except in the case of getting exotics. Moving on, Iron Banner seeing some pretty big changes with the Iron Banner quest. The pursuit objective values have been adjusted. One, they've reduced the grenade kills required by 50%. Thank you. They've also made it so that ally grenade kills are now worth as much as your own. Thank you. Next, they've reduced the sword kills required by 25%, and ally sword kills are now worth as much as your own. So, if you've been stuck on those two quest steps for the Iron Banner, hopefully by the next time it rolls around, since these changes are coming in, you know, right when the current Iron Banner is leaving, next time it comes around, hopefully you'll be able to get those steps done in no time flat. 
Moving on, they fixed an issue where players were unable to equip Season 3 Iron Banner ornaments on their Season 7 armor, the Wolf's Favor will no longer drop from daily and weekly Iron Banner challenges, and they fixed an issue where the Triumph Ephrodite's Gift was not unlocking for players who earned enough Iron Banner rank up packages during Season 7. This fix is of course going to be retroactive, and it will get players up to speed who have already met the requirements. So if you're one of those players who has turned in way more than enough Iron Banner packages to get that Triumph done and it still hasn't activated for you, don't worry, you don't have to wait until the next Iron Banner. This change is retroactive, so if you turned in all those packages already, you should just be able to activate this Triumph. But alright, moving on from there, we've got the Menagerie and the Chalice. First up, Heroic Menagerie now drops a sword for first time completions, guaranteed 100%. Uh, subsequent completions are going to have a moderate chance to drop of about 25%. Next, they fixed an issue where the Triumph Drink Deep would not unlock for some players who claim the Masterwork slot on the Chalice of Opulence, so you should have access to that Triumph right now if you were suffering from that. They fixed an issue where players could become stuck in the Season of Opulence intro quest by unlocking the first rune on the Chalice before completing the Conflux Lost Sector and being put on the correct quest step. And finally, Imperials and Runes can no longer be earned by idling through matches of Crucible and Gambit. So no more of that cheese. Moving on from there, we've got changes to the Truth Quest. They've replaced the step of the Truth Quest chain requiring the bounty Corsair down with a step requiring completion of three patrols in the Dreaming City. This is something I know a lot of people are going to be very happy about. Corsair down bounties are... Uh, not super rare, but they're fairly rare. You kind of have to be doing a lot of activities in the Dreaming City to actually get them. So I know a lot of people were having a lot of trouble getting their hands on some of those bounties, so I'm happy to see that they changed it to something more generic, and it's just doing patrols in the Dreaming City. So you can get more of those planetary mats. And they fixed a bug where players could become blocked from earning truth if they open the Ascendant Chest in the Strike Warden of Nothing before being on the appropriate quest step. I didn't even realize that was possible, but I guess with the way it works in just the normal strike, I could see how that would happen. Glad they fixed those glitches. And then finally, we have two general changes. They fixed an issue where completion notifications would not appear after players completed bounties, and this will also fix an issue where players would sometimes not spawn during a Crucible match. If you've been having the weird kind of spectator issue in Crucible, we talked about it last week, you basically go into your pursuits, you complete whatever completed bounties in your inventory, and then it'll log you in. Thankfully, you're not going to have to do that anymore. There's going to be no more ghost watching in PvP. And hopefully they fix the invisible player issue too, because that's been a little bit of a headache. Let me tell you, you have never seen anything more terrifying than a one-eyed masked, shoulder-charging, invisible titan. We're talking about death from above, we're talking death from 360 degrees. You don't know where they're going to be coming from. Huh, hopefully they have that fixed. But alright, Guardians, that is pretty much it for update patch 2.5.2. The Solstice of Heroes is of course live, and if you want to check out more about that, be sure to stay tuned here to the channel. We have a video covering everything from Solstice that came out last week, and I'm sure we're going to have even more guides on how exactly you're going to be able to upgrade your Solstice of Heroes armor as quickly as possible right here on the channel. So make sure you're staying tuned in for that. But that's it for this one, Guardians. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you're having a wonderful day and a great time in the world of Destiny 2. But I'm out for now. As always, I am the Black Link. You Guardians, stay frosty.